apologize for that little bit of shenaniganry. Before we come back over here, we need to turn that on. Then we can do. There we go. Welcome back, everybody, to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. We are currently inside the solar eclipse from um, Gerald's game and Dolores Claiborne. So that's exciting. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to read those books and or watch the movies, because they were both pretty good. Oh, hello. Hello, Thomasina. What is this? H who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? You were here 25 years ago. My father? You were deep down with the others. You were there and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then and I can help him again. I, I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. That's not the voice, I... One more thing. Yeah. This is not a dream. That's what a dream would say. <clears throat> it's not the voice I was expecting to come out of that thing. Backless shirts, those don't exist. Goodness, that was a terrible sleep. It's the weirdest stretch. What's that? What's this? That's what I said. It's a book with an egg belted to it. It's an egg a book. a strange stone strapped to the cover. Or stone. Yeah. That's chicken egg. Gravidarium, that means she's allergic to gravity. That's in red. That must be important. <coughs> So when two snakes eat the moon, we win. It appears to be a journal full of hogwash. I don't recognize the handwriting. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. Show me the chicken. Stanley! Morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That was quite the tune you treated us to last night. To be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. 
I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Well, uh... Objects do not appear from nowhere. You must have put it there. Miss Bateman, I've never even seen this book before. I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So, what does it say inside? Take a look. Well, I can't make head nor tail of it. Neither can I. Maybe someone else in the village can help you with it. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? Never. Then how did you know it was a chicken, sir? Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. What were it about? I was at Hobbs Barrow. Oh? But everything was different. Great peaks soared in the distance. And there was a creature. A creature, you say? Yes, a short, robed fellow, eyes as black as pitch. It told me that my father had been there in Hobbs Barrow many years ago, but something went wrong and the creature helped him escape. It said that I would find proof in the morning. Oh, the journal. You've had a premonition, lass. Please, Stanley, I've no time for that nonsense. But I'll admit it's a strange coincidence. Now, what did I tell you about Hobbs Barrow? That but you didn't know where it was. I... Hogwash. Your dream reminds me of a story from my childhood. An old folk tale about Hobbs Barrow. What is this folk tale you mention? Well, when I were a wee boy, there were talk of a goblin. They say he lived inside Hobbs Barrow. Hence the name, Hobbs Barrow. Hob, coming from Hob Goblin, of course. Oh, of course. Fortunately, I don't remember anything else about it. I was told not to believe in such fairy tales, Stanley. Don't close your mind to such things, lass. I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you more. Perhaps, if I ever meet him. Goodbye. See you soon. Oh, Good morning, Mr. Kemp. Good day, Miss Tompkins. I'm here for his lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Pryor hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. Indeed, I can vouch for that. Ma'am? Good day. Oh dear, his lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra! Goodbye. Yep, and then she teleports. I'm just gonna take this. <sighs> Goodness me, I can't budge it. Be careful, Miss Bateman. You'll cut yourself. I spent all morning trying to get that bloody thing out. I shall be having words with that scoundrel next time he shows his face. <sighs> Curses. We have our very own Excalibur. It's all yours if you can pull it out, King Arthur. <laughs> what did you attach the table to the floor, Stanley? And I have another question. Are you just a torso? Use chicken rock on knife. That's a peculiar idea. It is. But it's not the worst one I've ever had. No, that won't achieve any... I do not wish to damage Mr. Kemp's table any further than it already has been. Well, don't use it on the table. Use it on the knife, you dummy. No, that won't... Use Kenneth on knife. I'm not sure what that would achieve. Two Kenneths. App size. I do not wish to... No, that's not it. Fine. See you later, Stanley. Right. I need to convince Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs Barrow and find out where this journal came from. Curses! 
I forgot I had this worm in my pocket. Poor thing is dead now. Rest in peace, Kenneth. He was alive just a second ago. This matchbox is completely damp from the rain. The match is no use to me anymore. Puzzles we didn't solve last time. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. And I won't be coming back then. You're rude. Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. Hi. A pleasure to see you again. Thank Have you. you. Track down Mr. Shoulder yet? No. Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. Do you recognize this journal? Hmm. What a tatty old thing. You ought to take better care of your possessions, Miss Bateman. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. I wouldn't have asked you if you recognized it if I knew who it belonged to you. Do I need to cut you again? What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. You're kind of an idiot, aren't you? What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St. Edmund's, should you wish to join us later. Looking for new places to vomit. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. Something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. I think we've discovered that Mr. Uh, Panswick uh, worships Bongo, the god of gravity. Which that other lady was uh, allergic to. I just briefly saw that little thing right there. That someone's peeking at me from behind that building. Oh no! Well, if that's the case, we can walk on the tracks now. My mother always told me not. I always do everything I'm told to, except when it's convenient for the story that I don't. Um... I don't think anyone is home. I'm really glad the game gave us all these doors to knock on. Really glad. Especially the since there's... Looks closed. Especially since there's never anyone in them. Anything new in here to check out? I can admire the craftsman. I've no time for such... We didn't want to program her walking in between the pews, so we just, we made her do that. Alright, we got a journal, we got a chicken rock. You wanna see my chicken rock? I'm not sure they would be interested. How do you know? Maybe they like chicken rocks. Maybe they collect them. Perhaps I have something in here that could help me get the knife unstuck. Like Herbert up there hmm. on the fence. No, there's nothing useful here. I don't wish to wake him up. Herbert, do you know? I could tether a horse here if I had one. I suspect the barrels are empty. It's my crate of... Perhaps. Didn't mean to do that. Hmm. Yeah, she investigated the hell out of that crate, let me tell you.
Hello, Wally. Go away! You gave the door back to my sister. It wasn't very nice of you to bury her favourite toy, Wally. I gave it to the fair folk, and you stole it back from them. You don't really believe in fairies, do you? You're old enough to know better. They're real, and thanks to you, I'm cursed. Good. There's no such thing as curses either, Wally. Go away! The road disappears over... I hope you get cursed with manual breathing. Here. And nothing. Hmm. Big surprise. Margaret's dedicated to Arthur's mother. achievement for that. Good job. Anything? Nope. What a peculiar name, the Devil's Toe. I can't quite see the resemblance myself. Let's hit it with a stick. No. That's a peculiar idea. What's so weird about putting the chicken rock on a big pile of other rocks? That ain't weird. <gasps> chicken man. Chicken! I do not wish to harass the hen. I do not wish to harass the roost. I do not wish to. <sighs> no fun. I've come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. I'm not sure what... I'm not sure what... I can't see how that will help me. Can't see how throwing a rock through the window is going to help you get the guy's attention? I'm not sure... No sign of any movement. He looks much... You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Throw chicken through window. Mr. Shoulder... It was rather rude of him not to come inside and see me. Mr. Shoulder... It was... Maybe someone stole his glove, lady. It's dry. They are dry. I would hope so. It's the next day. A carved stone has been affixed. I think it depicts a crescent moon. <gasps> Need to hide that from the snakes. It's bolted onto the door itself. Bolt a stone to a door. You'd have to drill a hole through it. Or, or use an adhesive. Some sort. Hello, my good friend, Goat. Would you like a... I should leave the goat alone. Can you tell me what this means, goat? I should leave the goat alone. You're no fun, goat. Hello? She has a face on her back. Is the anyone home? Fu Manchu. Mr. Bryden doesn't seem to be here right now. I should come back a bit later. Or we should go inside and ransack the place. I can't see how that will help me. No sense of adventure. Only adventures I've been given express permission. Hmm. I can't see how... 
She's kind of like in good. Samus um, in other M. She won't do anything even, unless somebody tells her it's okay to. Like, I don't work for the army anymore, but if they tell me I can't use missiles, what am I supposed to do? Use missiles? They're gonna, they're gonna say bad words at me. What a way to ruin a character. Hey! Thomasina. My true Good morning, friend. Arthur. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. Of Hobbs Barrow. Playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. I wonder who left me this journal then? Mind if I take a closer look? Please, go ahead. You're the new Kenneth. The writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Do the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turn me stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. I had a splendid time last night. I, I even remember most of it this time. Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. I like you, even though you turned into a cat. I see the railway station is closed. What happened? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. Why do people think Mother Mildred is a witch? She has a Just big black hat and wide rides on a broom. Mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's well... They say she lays with demons. Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Hogwash. Someone That's the guy. To her for portions and spells. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? You might think us backward in Beulah, Thomasina, but we're not that backward. Sorry, Arthur. I only meant to tease. Goodbye. Tara. So there was a thing in here about getting some medicine. Maybe that's the same lady. Oh God! Another flashback. Thomasina, dear, come say goodbye to your father. Come on now, don't make him wait. I don't want to. Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. Those are strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time. But we'll go to Seabra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you. Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. Hmm. And then our psychic mind powers pushed him off a ladder. I, sh I shan't be visiting the badges again. I was lucky to escape intact. 
Oh, they're very friendly, just like the goat and the chicken. You're such a downer, Thomasina. I don't want to talk to the badger. I don't want to go pick up a bucket. I don't want to light the church on fire. The resin has set somewhat. It's firmly gripped to the stump. Gripped? An odd word for that situation. I've collected some waxy resin. I honestly didn't think that was going to work. I've collected this lump of waxy resin. Yes, you have. Good job. That's what her hair looks like? Oh, Lord. It's the old woman I saw at Bewley Station. Hello, old woman. I think you'd like a lump of resin. I'm not sure they would be interested. Maybe a chicken rock? Oh. Good day. What do you make of this stone? <laughs> I-A-W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket, or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. No introductions, no nothing. Just, hi, what's this? Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman. I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. I recognised you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking family resemblance. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. You knew my father? Such piercing blue eyes he had. What a handsome young man. With him in the Clone Wars. He was here, in Bewley. Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. Twenty-five years by my reckoning. But I'll never forget those eyes. Where did that get an achievement? Why was my father in Bewley? He were helping Samuel Bride and excavate Hobbs Barrow. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation in these parts. Nudge, nudge, Folks wink, wink. All around come to me for help with their ailments. Hernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this, as one day he came to me, asking for a cure. A cure for what? Called it. Your mother was with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Adam. I made something to help her. The journal. This was entered in the journal. It belongs to my father. What journal? This journal. Take a look at this. A passage recalls meeting a local wise woman to seek a tincture for his beloved's nausea gravidarum. Aye, that's me. I made the tincture for him. This... this is incredible. You don't recognise your own father's handwriting. It's been so many years since I've seen it. I think what's more incredible is she's showing everybody this invisible book. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. Binding magic? He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again, but I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel bride and hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. I don't blame you. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. 
I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. But your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. Frozen in carbonite, he was. The landlord of the Plough and Furrow told me about a folk tale associated with Hobbs Barrow. Something about a goblin. Are you familiar with it? No doubt there is such a tale. Name any beastie you can think of, and someone round here will have a story about it. My thoughts precisely. A worm named Kenneth. Are oh, we going to talk about the third man? I love that movie. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. Yeah, but he's not home. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him, as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. My path rarely crosses with his. Let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. The man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Thank you for your help, Ms. Walker. I shouldn't enter uninvited. Can I go in? Anything else? Oh, berries. What are those berries you're picking? An ancient breed. No good for eating. However, they do have some medicinal qualities. I see. They help you talk without moving your lips. Miss Bateman. What? Yes. Remember what I told you when we first met? No. You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. Why? Something terrible happened to Samuel Bryden in that barra. Whatever they found down there, I'd wager it got to your father too. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barra. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Miss Walker. One cannot abandon reason. It's full of flashbacks today. Thomasina! Thomasina, come here this instant! I'm playing with Josephine. She can wait. This is very important. Hmm. <laughs> Just take her. I'll be back soon, Josephine. I'll be back soon. Hello. <laughs> what is it, Mummy? It's... it's your father. Daddy's home? No, my dear. I must go to Bakewell with haste. Miss Bowes will look after you whilst I'm gone, is that clear? Where's Daddy? He's had... an accident. What happened? He's come off his horse. Silly Daddy. Will he be all right? Of course. Of course he will be fine. Your father is as strong as an ox, but I need to go collect him, all right? Can't I come too? No, dear. Miss Bowes will look after you. But I want to come. Go pick up your dolls, then come inside, all right? Yes, Mummy. It goes Mom, seeing multiple dolls. I only have one, Mom. We've been over this. Josephine, it's time to go inside now. Badger comes out of the bushes. It's just like Chrono Cross. Ah! Mom, you transformed! You know, we've never seen Mom and the maid in the same place at the same time. I helped him then, and I can help him again. Listen, <laughs> okay. He is staring intently into the woods. I think that's what he's doing. Arthur, you won't believe it. 
The journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. Arthur? Hello? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to remember something. What is it? I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. Were Let's you there too, Arthur? Plow. Arthur, I must tell you about the dream I had. I was at Hobbs Barrow and there was a creature. It told me it saved my father from something inside and that I would find proof of this in the morning. Sure enough, when I awoke, the journal was in my room. Mildred confirmed the journal belonged to my father. The creature told me it could help my father again. I mean, it was merely a dream. I don't know what to think anymore. Arthur? Arthur, are you listening? Fine then, we'll talk later. I hope you piece together your memories. You know, the creature also said this is not a dream. You either gotta believe all of it or none of it, lady. Let's go see if Cyril's home. Booker Elf! Yep. Ah, uh, the unmistakable charm of old Cyril. Me and Cyril are like that. You can't see it, but we're like that. Good day. Hey, up. I'm having some trouble extricating a knife from a table in the plow and furrow. Might I borrow a pair of pliers? A knife, you see. I can get that out for you. That's very kind of you, Mr. Crozier. Think nothing of it. Wait here. And fade out. And fade in. That were a struggle. Here you are. There's a finger stuck Thank to you it. So much. Look at this, Mr. Crozier. It's my father's journal. It wasn't much of a puzzle. Oh, why? Why are you showing me? Did you slip it under my door last night? Ha! Have you gone daft? Why would I have your father's journal? Never mind. Did the sketches inside mean anything to you? Looks like a load of rubbish to me. I found out my father visited Bewley 25 years ago. William Bateman, perhaps you remember him? I would have been just a lad. What were you here for? That's what I intend to find out. What do you make of this stone? Don't look like out to me. Are you familiar with any local folklore? Oh, why? The old cobbler used to tell me some right stories. Swore he sold a pair of boots to a goblin when he were a young man. A goblin, you say? I take it this cobbler was a regular at the plow and furrow? Never drank a day in his life. Sober as a judge. Such a sad man. The devil's toe. Yes, I'm familiar with the cairn. Some say they've seen the goblin's daughter there, playing her fiddle. Can't say I've seen her myself, mind. Do you know any other stories about this goblin? I don't have the time to be standing here gossiping about old wives' tales. Apologies. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. But I do have time to go pull knives out of tables during a, a fade-out. Hmm. Alright, that's it. Hmm. No, that won't work. Aren't you done yet? I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. You have. Oh, I'm sorry. You have two bins. Put them up here. No, number one, you'll be closer to dud. Number two, it'll be a lot easier to work on them down there. Um, where the hell should we go? Let's go check out the Devil's Toe. Ooh, spooky. Oh, God. Ah! 
Hey, boy. Use knife. Feed corpse of Kenneth to dog. We're probably intended to go that way. Fine. <clears throat> The ice cream truck is driving by. What? <laughs> Whose eye is that? Hello, dear. Good day. Sydney, must you be so unruly? Run along home now, won't you? He's a little more handsome than your average Bewley resident. I believe we've met. Miss Thomasina Bateman, the famous antiquarian. My reputation precedes me. I can assure you it does. And you are? James. James, James? Are you a painter? You see this back before you. Look at the water. See how it tumbles and falls. I seek one spot on which my eyes can rest. Be it a stone or a small corner of the current, I meet it with my gaze. And out of the tumbling and falling, a new land rises. I see a new world. You certainly have the eloquence of an artist. And then I paint it in purple. What are you painting? A new world. Quite the ambition. Indeed. My ambition knows no bounds. Can I see it? Not yet. It's not finished. And such a world is not complete without you in it. You flatter me, James. Nonsense. Say you'll let me paint you. Why not? Magnificent. You shall be the shining star of my new world. I don't really have the time now, though. Perhaps later? Don't fret, my dear. When the time comes, I shall call on thee. Capital. What do you make of this stone? It looks antique. You might want to keep a hold of it. An antique stone. Okay. Do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I'd like to know more about you, Thomasina. At what time do you like to rise in the morning? How do you like your tea? What makes you happy? People answering my questions. Late, with three spoons of sugar and spending time with my husband. You disappoint me. I sense no truth in your words. Are you a woman of dubious principles, Tomasina? You ask too many questions. Without answering any. Do you know Leonard Shoulder? A man of Bewley? Yes. I care not for the men of Bewley. Only for the visitors. Was that your dog? Yes, his name is Sidney. Quite the excitable pup. Don't mind his bark. The little fellow wouldn't hurt a fly. What do you know of Lord Panswick? A fine gentleman. Now that is someone who commands respect. Do you know him personally? No, I, I don't think anyone can really claim that. But what a tiring subject. Shall we discuss something a little more exciting? Goodbye. See you soon, <laughs> my dear. I was really hoping. Shall we discuss something more exciting? Bye. Let me see if the uh, parishioners have arrived. No, guess not. Check this door. It's locked. Use resin on doorknob. Hello. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Bateman? Ugh. That's my name. How marvelous. 
It's me, Leonard Shoulder. Heavens! I'd given up on finding you. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I offer you a thousand apologies. You see, I've been bound to me bed these past few days with a terrible fever. How dreadful. I take it you're feeling better now? Aye. I would on me way to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. I'm embarrassed. I really am. I've been doing my best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. Please accept my apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, Mr. Shoulder. I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvelous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? I have my means. I swear, Miss Bateman, I had no idea. Hmm. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? My father's journal was slipped under my door at the Plough and Furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. I wanted to save. Damn. All right, let's let's get through this. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colorful folklore surrounding the place. My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I was a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously, especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. How did you know about me? I saw your interview in the Bakewell Times. A young lady traveling about the land, digging up barrows. Perfect for the job. But why do you wish to excavate the barrow? I want to see what those lads found in there. My curiosity has grown over the years. Now it is time for the mystery to be solved. I must say I am rather eager to find out what's in there myself. I've managed to find Hobbs Barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? Keep trying. You'll relent eventually. Perhaps you could have a word with him. Oh no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. Hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the Barrow. I didn't foresee anyone I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. Did you know my father? I don't believe so. What's his name? William. William Bateman. He was in Beaulieu for at least a few days, from my understanding. I'm sorry, lass. The name doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. Are you sure you had no idea of my father's involvement in the previous excavation? I'm quite sure. A most fascinating coincidence, but nothing more than that. I'm starting to wonder if it's more than mere coincidence, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bateman, I did not take you for a credulous individual. I'm none of the sort. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabouts. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Even Hearn Wood was sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. 
It was long said that a goblin made his home there. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believed that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Hogwash. My father would have paid no heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrel, people say it did the trick. The crop started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. Yuli were no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. You must understand. Folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. And it's also why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the place. Except for you. I want to know what's there. Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel. But did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Coincidence reigns supreme. So what do you think they found? That is for us to discover, Miss Bateman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden on the excavation? I'm afraid I don't know. Although I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it. I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm. So, we've got... You know, uh, possible otherworldly forces causing the ground and the animals to rot and die. And that's a Lovecraft thing. That's the color out of space. And then we've got the weird old guy who seems to know everything. And we're just sitting and talking with him, overlooking where all the weird stuff happens. And that's that's a character from um, Shadow over Innsmouth. Uh, what's his name? Zadok. Zadok Allen was his name. Well, interesting. Tell me more of this folklore you mention. It is said that Hobbs Barrow is home to a goblin. Everyone in Bewley has some version or another of this story. But the version my father told me as a child described the barrow as a thin place. The goblin were deemed to be the guardian of this so-called thin place. And that's the mound. That's, a. Uh... That was Lovecraft and Zalia Bishop, I think. She wrote it, he edited it, I think. Tell me more about this goblin. Some said he were a mischievous little mite, snatching newborn lambs and smashing windows with pebbles. Others said he were friendly, there to lend a helping hand in times of strife. The latter of which makes it all the more surprising as to why the previous excavation took place. My father's stories put the goblin in the mischievous category. Saxnot, he called the creature. I recall one such anecdote, that Saxnot entered Bewley and ordered a pair of boots to be made by the cobbler. However, when collecting them, he insisted on paying for them with a bag of sow's teeth. The cobbler was so scared of angering the goblin that he accepted. A colorful tale indeed, Mr. Shoulder. Has any explanation been offered for why this sax not cursed the soil? Your guess is as good as mine, lass. Hey, how's teeth? Sow's teeth, excuse me. Uh, worth their weight in gold. In some places. Nowhere you'd ever want to go, though. What is a thin place? A place where one can walk between worlds. Where the flesh meets the spirit world. Hmm. Just superstition, of course, as you well know. Uh, there are thin places in the Dark Tower books. There's a lot of them. They're called thinnies, oddly enough. 
I had a peculiar dream last night. I met a creature at Hobbs Barrow. I suppose you might say it was a goblin. It told me it had saved my father from trouble inside Hobbs Barrow. I'll admit the coincidence of this is somewhat astounding. A remarkable coincidence, but nothing more than that. But there is still one thing that puzzles me. The goblin told me proof of its claims would await me in the morning. Surely enough, I awoke to find that my father's journal had appeared in my room. Very queer indeed. Mr. Shoulder, you invited me here, to a town I'd never heard of, only for me to discover that my own father was here 25 years before. And not only that, but that he was also embroiled in some sort of superstitious hysteria which goes against everything he ever taught me. Something is wrong here. This must be more than mere coincidence. It's strange, I'll give you that. But please remember who you are, Miss Bateman. This is my father's journal. Incredible. Can I look inside? You may. Look at these drawings. Wonder what it all means. You and I both. It all feels very out of character for my father. I'm sure you'll find the answers beneath the soil, Miss Bateman. When when we go back and don't have this box in the way, pay pay attention to Mr. Shoulder's head here. I know he's wearing a hat, but it just looks like a really bad toupee. What do you make of this strange stone? A carving of a cockerel? Yes, it was strapped to my father's journal. Do you think it could have something to do with the previous excavation? Possibly, though I'm not aware of the motif having any meaning around these parts. Is this your glove? I've been looking all over for that. Where did you find it? In the alley behind the plow and furrow on the night of my arrival. Were you there? As I say, I've been bedbound for several days, Miss Bateman. How odd. Can I please have it back? Here. Thank you. We're peas of the same pod, Miss Bateman. I knew you wouldn't be frightened by a few old stories. It will be interesting to see what those lads found in there. Certainly. Thank you so very much for responding to my letter and for coming here. We have some great discoveries to make, you and I. I sincerely hope so. And the chance to follow in your father's footsteps. Right, time for me to shift these old bones. I'm to take me a spot of the plow and furrow. I'll be there all night should you need me assistance. Thank you, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sorry again for giving you the runaround. I promise I am not beyond redemption. I won't let you down again. See you soon. I was starting to wonder if Mr. Shoulder even existed. <sighs> okay. Okay, where do we go? Sorry we ran long there, wasn't expecting it to. Uh, we picked up another eight achievements, so we've gone from 20 to 40% of all the achievements in the game. There's 40 total. Um, looking at some of these... have to do two playthroughs to get them all. One of them involved that uh, Shakespeare thing. Should have answered the third question. We would have got it, but I didn't. It's alright. It's fine. Hope you all enjoyed the stream. We will be back next Monday. There's nothing going on next Monday, so we will be here. Um, and yeah, same time, same place. If you missed the first two episodes and want to catch up on those, um, check them out on jasonsgroovemachine.com. There's the link right there. Look at it. It was words. Now it's gone. You'll figure it out. Uh, anything else? Nope. Hope you're enjoying. Thank y'all. We'll see you next time.